let's now let's work out some problems. All right, so we've got a train going at a constant speed of 60 miles per hour. Uh, it crosses under a road as shown. The automobile A is traveling at 45 miles per hour, and it looks like it's kind of at the road is at 45 degrees as well. Uh, determine the magnitude and direction of the velocity of the train relative to the automobile. So the first thing that I would do is notice that this is a relative velocity problem. Now you got to get your mind right. What type of problem is this? What section, you know, of the lectures were we in when we were doing these types of problems? So it's a relative velocity problem. Uh, and then, so I'm about to write the A, which would be plus the A slash I'm about to write my relative velocity equation, but let me think about the subscripts. Do I, I've got the train and I've got the automobile. So do I need to be doing an equation that has V T slash A or V A slash T? This equation right here tells you V T slash A, train relative to the automobile. So that's kind of my second step. First step, notice it's a relative velocity problem. Second step, all right, is it B slash R or A slash C? All right, so this is T slash A. So T slash A, I've got two equations I could use. VT equals VA plus VT slash A. So I could use that one and just rearrange. And actually rearranging it would, would give me uh, VT minus VA. So, so I'm going to write my equation, taking careful note of those subscripts making sure that it is true so i can either start with that top one or i could start with that second one that's the same equation and then let me just plug in let me just plug in these vectors plug in everything i know so v <clears throat> t slash a is equal to uh what is vt what is the velocity of the train 60 and vectors matter uh, all of it's in the I. We're lucky with that. One. Right. Minus VA. So what is VA? What's the velocity of the automobile? It's 45, uh, but it is at a 45 degree angle. So uh, let's see, cosine 45 in the I, 45, sine 45 in the J. And be real careful to subtract that whole VA term. So put those brackets up. Now I said, you know, these equations, you can solve for two unknowns. What are my two unknowns here? My two unknowns are both on the left-hand side. The I component and the J component are my two unknowns. Another way to think about it. The two unknowns on the left-hand side of my equation are the magnitude and the direction. Uh, so if you have a term that you don't know its direction and you don't know its magnitude, that's two unknowns right there. You know, it's not like I have one unknown on the left-hand side of that equation. I've got two unknowns on the left-hand side of my equation, but that's fine because I know everything on the right-hand side of my equation. <clears throat> All right, and then this is just math, right? Put the I's together, put the J's together. The velocity of T slash A would be 28.2 in the I minus 31.8 in the J. Uh, need units, miles per hour. Uh, that minus... That just came from the math. I didn't add, I didn't have to consider, I mean, the math, if you're drawing everything the right direction, then the math comes out. Now, normally, nine times out of 10, that's what the question is asking for, and I would box that in. Uh, do you see that this one doesn't ask just for the velocity? It, it kind of specifies magnitude and direction. So, and that's perfectly fine. If you know the I and the J, what's the magnitude? You know, a squared plus b squared, take the square root of 28.2 and 31.8. Uh, let me kind of draw it over here. So, so it's, it's going to the right, 28.2. Uh, it's going down, 31.8. So it's really going the magnitude, 28.2 squared, 31.8 squared, 42.5 is the magnitude. What about the direction? Uh, what would this direction be? I would use tangent. Right, inverse tangent, 30, opposite over adjacent, 31.8 over 28.2.
and I would get this angle is 48.5 degrees. So here we go. VT slash A is 42.5 miles per hour at, and let me you see how I'm specifying with that arrow that it's below horizontal. Uh, 48.5 degrees. So that's how, if I ask for magnitude and direction, that's how I want it. Now, normally I, I specify the direction positive uh, counterclockwise from horizontal. But, it, but since I drew that arrow showing you, hey, this is below horizontal, leave it like that. Now, you know, nine times out of 10, though, I don't ask for the magnitude. I just ask, what, if I said, what's the velocity of T relative to A? It'd be that pink box is what I'm looking for. But if we specify, hey, what's the magnitude and the direction? That second one would be the answer. Um, most of the time, this relative velocity term, I don't really understand it logically sometimes. It's hard for me to visualize sometimes. Do you, you think, but do you see what this is saying? This is saying if I'm in the automobile and I think the world revolves around myself and I'm not paying attention to the trees outside, I'm not paying attention to the road, but I'm only paying attention to this train, it's almost like it's kind of coming, you know, this way at 48.5 degrees, you know, on this figure. This overhead, if you're looking at an overhead view, you know, it's almost like the train's coming this way. And doesn't it kind of, kind of, can you kind of see that? I mean, you know it's going that way, but it's almost like it's getting closer and closer to you. Um, and at a mat, it would be, it would feel, it would, the perceived velocity of the train relative to you would be 42.5 miles per hour at this 48.5 degree angle. Okay? You don't spend too much time trying to, trying to understand. The math works. If it says it has some relative velocity, if you did the math, then you did it correct. Relative acceleration is, is I will never understand relative acceleration, but, it, but it's, it is what it feels like. It is accelerating one relative to another. Okay, 